Please stand. Those here present and those of you joining us on live stream. Uh, today we gather on the feast of Saint Apollinaris. Apollinaris was the first bishop of Ravenna. We begin our Eucharist in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, as we gather around the table of the Lord to celebrate this great gift of Eucharist, we take a moment to examine our conscience, asking God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the strength of your martyrs. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the joy of your elect. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Erect your faithful Lord in the way of eternal salvation, which the bishop, St. Apollinaris, showed by his teaching and martyrdom, and grant through his intercession that we may so persevere in keeping your commandments as to merit being crowned with him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Hear what the Lord says. Arise, present your plea before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, O mountains, the plea of the Lord. Pay attention, O foundation of the earth. For the Lord has a plea against his people, and he enters into trial with Israel. O my people, what have I done to you, and how have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt, from the place of slavery, I released you, and I sent you before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. With what shall I come before the Lord, and how before God most high, and bow before God most high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with myriad streams of oil. Shall I give the firstborn for my crime, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? You have been told, O oh man, what is good, and what the Lord requires of you, only to do the right 
and to love goodness and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the upright, I will see the power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, but for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statues and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to, and to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. The upright, I will show the saving power of God. <clears throat> If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some of the scribes and Pharisees said to Jesus, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you. He said to them in reply, An evil and unfaithful generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And there is something greater than Jonah here. At the judgment, the queen of the south will arise with this generation and condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, in Rome, there is an ancient basilica. Oh, you'd tell me there are a lot of ancient basilicas in Rome, which is true. But this one in particular. It's the Basilica of St. Clement. You walk into the basilica, you don't walk straight in. You've got to walk down because the city has been built up since that basilica was built. I think it dates from the 11th or 12th century. But what is important is that there's another basilica under it. And you can go into that basilica because it was excavated. And under that basilica, there is the original basilica, 
that was built in the third century, shortly after the uh, Edict of not uh, Edict of uh, Constantine, which gave freedom to the Christians. In that basilica, underneath, you are in the first centuries of Christianity. On the walls, there are several, we can still see them, there are several um, frescoes that were painted by early, I would say, early Christians because they have religious themes to them. One of them is the famous whale and Jonah. And the reason why it's on the wall is because Jonah has become a sign of the death and resurrection of Christ. And so that's why it's painted on the wall. The sign of Jonah. Jesus says to these teachers and Pharisees who are constantly trying to taunt him, to trip him up, because they're jealous. They're jealous of the fact people are warming up to him, that he can draw crowds around him, that they listen to every word that he speaks. They're jealous and a little bit fearful that thanks to him, they're going to lose their power. That is to say, their influence over the people. And so they, from time to time, try to put him against the wall. This is one such time. The teacher, give us a sign. What are they asking for? They say, well, prove that you are who you say you are. That's what they're asking for. And his answer to them is rather uh, rough, you might say. An evil and unfaithful generation seeks a sign. He's talking about them. But the sign that he gives them is not just a little, you know, a little sign that has no importance. It's an image of what is going to happen to him. The sign of Jonah. And he says it. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. And then as we know, was spewed on the uh, shore of the great city of Nineveh. So will the son of man, he says, be in the bowels of the ground three days and three nights. He's talking, of course, of his death and resurrection because he doesn't stay in the bowels of the earth. And so really, this is a very important image. It's an image of his death and resurrection. And if you want, it's an image of our salvation. And that's what he's telling them. He says, the sign you're going to be given is one of the great signs of God's love for you. Because in me, he has brought about the salvation of the world. That's what he's telling them. And he continues. Beautiful. This is a beautiful passage. He continues. He says, at the judgment... The men of Nineveh, remember Jonah, went to Nineveh to preach repentance. He said to them, if you guys don't change your ways, this magnificent city of yours, which was the capital, is going to be destroyed. And lo and behold, the Ninevites believed him and went into a period of mourning and repentance so that the city was not destroyed by God. And this is what Jesus is referring to. Huh? They repented at the preaching of Jonah, he says. And then he continues with another image. Well, of course, he says over here, but there is someone here greater than Jonah, speaking of himself. And at the judgment, the queen of the south, he's speaking of the queen of Sheba, who had come to see uh, King Solomon because she had heard of his wisdom. And she wanted to be able to to experience that wisdom for herself. And he says, well, you have someone greater than Solomon here. 
In other words, these great figures that you find in Scripture, of course, we're talking of the Old Testament, or as it is called today, the Jewish Scriptures. These great examples in these Scriptures, you have someone here who is greater than what these Scriptures are extolling. But you don't see it. You're blind to the reality of what God is trying to do for you today. Well, my brothers and sisters, you know, you and I can be rather blind to what God desires to do for us in our day. The graces that he constantly offers us. How often do we just let them go by? We don't open our hearts to them. The chances that he gives us to demonstrate Christian charity. We let them go by. The challenges that he puts before us to help us really develop our Christian faith. More often than not, we complain about them. Why does this happen to me? How come I got to do that? How come this is facing me? How come, how come, how come? We don't see the opportunities. We don't see the graces that God is offering us at that time and in those situations. All what we see is ourselves and the fact that this is going to cause us problems. That's all we see. And so, you know, if Jesus were standing here instead of yours truly, would he repeat these words to us? Would he chide us more severely? Because we've received a lot more. We've received a lot more. And at times we are just blind to those graces. Blind. And so that's our big challenge today. The Lord Jesus tells us, take a look at what I'm doing for you. Open your eyes, open your minds, and more importantly, open your hearts that you can get into this tremendous salvation event that is unfolding before you. It's your chance to really participate in all of that, that, all of that which I came to share with you in my death and resurrection. You can enter into that. Why do you refuse? we bring before the Lord our cares and concerns. That the, that the church and her holy leaders may always be attentive and responsive to the Lord, Jesus, realizing his greatness and dignity as well as his loving kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our generation may not be an evil and unfaithful one, but that we may repent like the men of Nineveh and return to the ways of life, love, and justice upon the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who brought his people out of slavery, may hear the cries of all those who are bound by disease, oppression, grief, and addiction, and come swiftly to their aid. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we who follow Jesus may accomplish what the Lord requires of us, doing right, loving goodness, and walking humbly with our God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need of the Lord's healing, including Phyllis Chidester, Javier 
Cepeda, David, Jared, L Luis, Acos, and those in our book of prayer request, let our praise to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Roberto Lagre, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We bring all of these intentions as we petition Our Lady to be with us during this most difficult time that we face. We pray together. O Mary, health of the sick, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you. You know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, leading us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. The offertorium will be, May God bless and keep you. May God bless and keep you. May God bless and keep you. May God smile on you. May God show you. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Amen. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray, and by your grace may we be set afire with the flame of your love through which St. Apollinaris overcame every bodily torment through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give honor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration as we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, 
like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, Saint Joseph, her spouse, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another.
Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it in eternity, says the Lord. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr Apollinaris faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, but in all about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go to proclaim the good news. You have a wonderful day. And our closing hymn is Alleluia, sing to Jesus. Alleluia, sing to Jesus.